Hello and welcome to the Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli, and I just want to do a short video on a uh, little noticed event that took place a couple of days ago, uh, but that has um, the potential to uh, be a political earthquake. So um, a few days ago, um, the defense and intelligence um, ministers of Turkey, Syria, and Russia met in Moscow. Uh, this is the uh, first high-level meeting between uh, Turkish and Syrian officials really since the start of the civil war in uh, Syria. And this follows from on from the uh, conciliatory um, words that have been uttered by um, uh, Turkish President Erdogan, who in November said that he doesn't rule out the uh, possibility of meeting Bashar al-Assad. The Turkish foreign minister also said that he, he doesn't see any problems in meeting um, the, the uh, Syrian government officials. Um, and clearly there is um, a major reconciliation um, effort that is taking place um, between uh, Turkey and Syria. Now, if you recall, um, the relations between Turkey and Syria had been pretty good um, up until the start of the civil war. So there was the, the 1998 Adana Agreement, um, which uh, uh, it allowed Turkey to make um, essentially uh, anti-terrorist uh, incursions into Syria in hot pursuit of uh, the PKK, uh, you know, Kurdistan uh, Workers' Party, um, uh, terrorists as the Turkish uh, government calls them. Um, and in return, Turkey would recognize um, Syrian uh, sovereignty and territorial uh, integrity. So that was the, the 1998 uh, Adana agreement. Um, and then, um, Bashar al-Assad, took over uh, soon afterwards, and relations were pretty good even on a personal level between um, Erdogan and um, Bashar al-Assad. And then in 2011, the, uh, we had the Arab Spring, and the Obama administration somewhat opportunistically decided that this would work to America's advantage. They would get rid of uh, various... Um, you know, old fogies uh, that had ruled over the Arab world, such as uh, Hosi Mubarak in Egypt, and insert uh, so-called moderate uh, Muslims who would be very uh, pro-American. So something um, of that idea uh, had uh, prevailed uh, during the Clinton administration uh, when they extolled the virtues of um, Aliyah Izetbegovic in um, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and and then of course um, you know there's Hashim Tachi and the rest of the the gang um, in Kosovo. Now of course Izetbegovic was not a moderate um, Muslim by any stretch of the imagination, but the, that's how the Clinton administration presented it to the world. So we're going to have uh, these sort of, you know Islamist but moderate pro-American installed, and then, you know, that, that'll take the wind out of the sails of all the uh, Osama bin Ladens who claim that America is waging a crusade against um, Islam. So, you know, so they would say, no, 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 we are, we are, we are pro-Muslim. Look at all these Muslim allies that we have. Um, so uh, that was the Obama administration uh, position. And uh, during the Arab Spring, and so they said, you know, time for Mubarak to go. And then they, you know, they, they said the same thing about uh, Saleh in uh, Yemen, time for him to go. And of course, it was time for Assad to go. Uh, so it was, you know, and we should also not forget, it was also time for Gaddafi to go. So in 2011, <laughs> the United States <laughs> de declared that no less than four leaders of the Arab world had to go. And um, uh, toward this uh, end, the United States uh, incorporated uh, the Turkey. Turkey was uh, would, would be would provide the muscle to uh, shove um, uh, Assad out of the door. And Erdogan 
uh, played along with this. He thought, yeah, this is, this is not a bad idea. So he created his own um, uh, Syrian uh, national army, um, which, of course, also uh, was made up of, uh, of various uh, jihadis and, um, and you know, decided that, that he was going to push um, Assad out. The Obama administration then began to get cold feet uh, once it became clear that uh, they were actually uh, financing and supporting uh, you know, various radical jihadists, uh, the, the people that came to be known as ISIS. And so they, they, uh, they began to distance themselves from the previous policy, uh, leaving Erdogan uh, holding the bag because he was still involved with these um, uh, various uh, radical jihadi group. And, um, uh, and then the Obama administration, of course, Trump uh, after him, uh, switched their, um, you know, their clients towards the Kurds. Now the Kurds, these are, these are the people we're gonna support uh, in order to uh, get uh, rid of uh, Bashar al-Assad. And then we can also have the Kurds that can fight against um, ISIS. Um, now, this naturally um, infuriated uh, Erdogan, uh, first of all, because Erdogan had been left holding the bag. He, he'd been uh, delegated to provide the muscle to ease out um, Assad. So he now had all these uh, Islamists on, on his hands. Uh, and, and to top it off, the Americans were supporting the various Kurdish groups um, in, uh, in, in the northwest and in the northeast of uh, Syria. So uh, he was uh, very unhappy about all this, but he was now stuck with this uh, policy uh, and enmity uh, toward uh, Syria. And so, you know, it went on until, of course, Russia made its decisive uh, entry into the war in uh, September 2015 when it uh, attacked the various um, uh, Islamist groups, liberated uh, much of the country from the grip of these various Islamists. Not, not all of the country, because um, Idlib in the uh, northwest of the country remained a kind of a stronghold of Islamists. Um, but what was clear um, as a result of the Russian intervention uh, was that Bashar al-Assad would not be thrown out. You know, he would he would stay, he would be the government of uh, Syria, and there was no way of getting him out. So now, um, Turkey was really in a very tight spot because it, it, the, the Americans were supporting the and, and financing and training and arming uh, these Kurdish forces who were uh, aligned with the PKK, you know, the Kurdistan Workers' Party. And this, of course, um, created a great deal of problems uh, for uh, Turkey. And, um, uh, you know, Turkey began uh, orienting itself towards Russia to see how it can somehow get itself out of the position because it was, it still was in a way the sponsor of uh, Idlib, where, which was, of our stronghold of these uh, jihadis, but uh, even more problematic uh, was that uh, you, know, you know there was something like four million uh, Syrian refugees stuck in uh, Turkey, and this was causing a lot of problems in Turkey. There was you know, there were very you know the Turks are very unhappy about this. I mean, as anyone would be, you know, four you know four million, and at various times Erdogan has. Um, use these uh, 4 million uh, Syrians to blackmail uh, Europe uh, in order to try and extract some money from them. So and he's saying, well, you know, I, I can't take it anymore. I mean, unless you solve the Syrian problem, I'm just gonna open the floodgates and, and let you deal with these um, millions of uh, Syrians. Uh, and the Europeans panic stricken at the idea of, you know, 4 million uh, Syrians suddenly flood, flooding onto the European continent would give Erdogan, whatever you ask for, you know, billion euros, two billion euros, you know, three billion euros, you know, whatever, whatever uh, was on Erdogan's mind. But you know, you can only play this game uh, for a while, and um, and clearly, as far as Erdogan was concerned, his hopes that the Americans could help him out uh, have founded. I mean, you know, the Americans continue to support uh, the Kurds. They're not Americans are not prepared to. Uh, 
reconcile at all with uh, Bashar al-Assad. In fact, if anything, they've tightened the sanctions and um, they've, um, uh, you know, with, through the Caesar Act, which sanctions any company that is involved in any kind of reconstruction work or any economic assistance program towards Syria. So that's, that's in any company anywhere in the world will be who's in, uh, who's helping out uh, Syria will be subjected to American sanctions. So, so you know it's quite a uh, brutal uh, sanctions policy. Um, but so Americans are stuck, you know, and, and because the Americans have stolen. Um, agricultural land uh, from the Syrian government. They've also stolen oil refineries from the Syrian government. The, the, the Kurds are getting a lot of money. They're getting, they're getting money from the uh, oil sales and you know, they're money, getting money from uh, the agriculture. So naturally, uh, you know, the Kurds are getting stronger and stronger and, and Tur Turkey is very upset about this. Hence, um, essentially, Erdogan's been forced to go to uh, Moscow and uh, say, hey, we got to <laughs> deal with this problem. Um, the Americans aren't going to help me because you know they've got their clients, uh, the, the the Kurds. They uh, they want to uh, bleed Russia dry, not only in um, uh, Ukraine, but as they've said many times before, they also want to do it um, in uh, Syria. Uh, so they're not going to help us. Um, can you do something for us? And Russia said, yeah, sure, we, we, we can help you out, but you have to do something for us, uh, and that is normalize your relations with Syria. And if you normalize your relations with Syria, then we can unleash the Syrian army onto the Kurds. So you know, you're not gonna have these uh, pro problems on your southern border from the Kurdistan Workers' Party because they will be defeated by uh, the Syrians, probably uh, with uh, the help of Russian air power. So um, that's the thrust of these uh, negotiations that are now taking place um, among, among the three powers, uh, Russia, Turkey, and Syria. So in other words, the, uh, in return for uh, Turkish withdrawal from Syria, withdrawal of its armed forces from Syria, Syria will take care of the Kurdish problem. Um, and, uh, and of course, down the road, there'll be full normalization. So, you know, already Erdogan said in November that he's ready to meet Assad, and so we can we can look forward to that. Now, of course, then the question is, what happens then? Will, what, how will the Americans respond to um, an offensive against the Kurds? Uh, because that's the American clients. I mean, they've they've invested a great deal into uh, uh, in, into supporting and um, and, and training uh, this uh, the, the Kurdish forces. Um, will they just allow them to be defeated? Um, so that you know there might be pressure on the United States to get itself militarily involved against uh, Syria. That's the possibility. Then, of course, there's also the possibility that um, uh, you know, you know. I mean, as I said, the Caesar Act that uh, passed by uh, Congress penalizes any company uh, in the world that um, works to reconstruct uh, Syria. So that's obviously going to help. That's that's going to apply to um, the Chinese as well. So you know, if, if any. Any hope that China might provide some financial support and uh, backing for Syria is, is by, by no means uh, clear because the Chinese don't want to get sanctioned, and that, but there they would also be facing uh, sanctions. So it's not clear at the moment that China will necessarily pick up the slack and provide um, uh, reconstruction aid uh, to Syria. I mean, Iran will certainly provide some assistance, Russia will provide some assistance, but it's nowhere near um, on the level uh, necessary to rebuild Syria after um, what, 11 years of uh, civil war. An, an interesting sideline to all the hysteria about who will rebuild Ukraine? What are we gonna do about Ukraine? How many billions is it gonna take to rebuild Ukraine? 
and you know nobody gives a damn about the, what, what what's been done to Syria. And on the contrary, um, the uh, the Americans are all for ratcheting up the um, uh, the pressure on uh, on Syria. So that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, we, we we're having this um, uh, essentially you know tripartite discussions um, among Turkey, Syria, Russia. Uh, clearly, some kind of a deal is in the works involving um, Turkish withdrawal from uh, Syria. May even involve uh, the abandonment of um, uh, Idlib, um, the return of uh, the refugees from uh, Turkey because they just pain in the neck. And Erdogan has um, an election this year. They're very these refugees are very unpopular in Turkey. If he wants. Uh, uh, you know, wants to be re-elected, he's going to address this problem. Um, but it's still all to play for because we, we the question still arises, how will the United States respond to um, an impending defeat uh, of the Kurds? This is not something Russia has uh, has sanctioned in the past. Russia had, had uh, waged a war against ISIS, and had uh, trained and supported the Syrian armed forces while they were fighting against ISIS, but they haven't yet um, uh, sanctioned a war against the Kurds. But that's the minimum that uh, uh, Erdogan will require from uh, Syria uh, in return for a, a withdrawal of Turkish forces uh, from Syria. Anyway, um, that's the situation. It's a potential um, earthquake because we're, while We've already discussed here on the gaggle the uh, normalization of relations uh, between Syria and some of the Gulf states, particularly United Arab Republics. But the normalization between Syria and Turkey it would is a, a big game changer. Anyway, that was the gaggle. Thank you very much for joining me. And remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.